Hello, we're going to talk about interval estimation for the mean. You should have previously read chapter 10 in connection with this material. So I'd invite you to take a minute, pause the video, and dissect this scenario. So when finding an interval for the mean, we first need to recognize that we have the sample mean here and that we have the sample standard deviation. Now, if we were given the sample variance, we would have to square root that to get the sample standard deviation. And we know the sample size. And so the formula for the interval looks like this. And so we know S, we know N, and we know mu hat. We now just need to find T. And to find T, we need the degrees of freedom, or delta. And in this case, that is N minus 1. And so that equals 159 minus 1 equals 158. Now, because we are dealing with the mean and the interval for a mean, and this guy is a T right here, we're going to use our T table to find that value. So we come down to our T table, and we're going to use the 0.025 column. And 158 does not appear in the table, so we come to the next smallest value. So if your degrees of freedom does not appear in the table, you come to the next smallest value. So that is the T value we are going to use, the 1.984. So our T equals 1.984. So then I'm going to take 425.13 plus or minus 1.984 times 36, 369.59 divided by the square root of 159. And so this plus or minus means we're going to take that number minus this product on the other side. And then we're going to take that number and do plus that same thing. And that's how we get two numbers for the interval. And so when we do that, we get a 366.9782 and a 483.2818. Now, in general, rounding to about two decimal places will be sufficient. So that's how you find the interval for the mean. So now let's talk, what is the interpretation of the confidence interval? So the reason that we use the, we're always going to use the 0.025 column is because we're always going to do a 95% confidence interval. And so we're going to talk about how we're 95% confident. So the interpretation is I am 95% confident the interval 366, 484 captures the true average number of Facebook friends of UW students. Now, in general, you don't need to round to whole numbers with the interval, but we can only have integer values for the number of Facebook friends. And so we come down with the lower bound, but then we go up with the upper bound to make the interval just a little bit wider. And so if you have to round because of the context of the problem, because our variable is how many Facebook friends do you have, you want to make it a little bit wider. So I'm 95% confident the interval 366 to 484 captures the true average number of Facebook friends of UW students. Now, it's very common to think, well, that's the same thing as saying I'm 95% confident the true average number of Facebook friends of UW students is inside the interval. But this is actually incorrect. And the reason for this is where is the uncertainty? And so up here in the correct answer, we're talking about being 95% confident that the interval is capturing 
And this right here is representing our parameter. And in this case, that's the population mean. And so I'm confident, I'm confident the interval captures the parameter. We're down here, this is saying I'm confident, and here is the parameter, is inside the interval. Well, we have no confidence or uncertainty or anything about the parameter. We only have confidence, uncertainty about what the interval is doing. And so that's why talking about the parameter being inside the interval is incorrect. We talk about the interval capturing or captures the parameter, or in this case, the true average number of Facebook friends of UW students. And finally, what is the answer to the question of interest? Well, let's remind ourselves that Zuckerberg makes this claim, and then our question of interest is really, is this claim true? And so the answer is, well, there is evidence that Zuckerberg's claim is false. The interval is not completely above the 400. And so when we look at this, we think about a number line, and I've got 400 right here. And my interval comes down somewhere here at around the 366 and then goes up to the 484. This 400 is in the interval. And so I don't have evidence that it's strictly more than 400. For it to be strictly more than 400, I'd have the 400 here, and my interval would be somewhere completely above it. So do I have evidence that it's above? No. Do I have evidence that it's below? No. I don't know whether it's more or less than 400 because 400 is inside the interval.